Hi, my name is Kyle Steinfeld. Uh, today I'll be talking about sketch to pics uh, This is a technical accounting of the development of an augmented architectural drawing tool called sketch to pics which is an interactive application that supports architectural sketching augmented by automated image-to-image -image translation. This talk was given at the CDRF conference uh, in 2020, and I forgot to push play before I started. <laughs> I forgot to push record before recording the actual talk. So this little introduction uh, will be followed by my actual talk. Recording the talk, I forgot to hit play. Um, so I'm going to begin with a, a brief discussion of our motivation for the project, uh, along with a description of some basic terms and the central mechanisms uh, of the tool that, that are intended to support creative sketching. Uh, and at the end of the talk, if there's time, I'm actually going to attempt a live demo. So wish me luck on that. Um, OK, so first, a brief introduction. There we go. Um, so we might observe that the intersection of recent advances in machine learning and architectural design tools remains a largely undefined territory. While it's clear that uh, AI-based design tools present, present uh, fresh challenges to the way that we understand and use software in the service of designing and building, the nature of these challenges and the character of the related opportunities are still uncertain. Um, this project represents one step towards demonstrating an opportunity that we've identified and in bringing machine learning to bear on better supporting modes of reasoning that are central to creative design. So while broadly speaking, uh, existing paradigm for design tools have been shown to effectively support what we might understand to be deductive reasoning. We assert that a new paradigm of design tool uh, based on machine learning will be uniquely situated to address heretofore unsupported modes of reasoning about design, uh, such as imagistic and inductive thinking. So this difference is clear uh, from the intrinsic mechanisms of the tools uh, involved, if we look at them more carefully. So for example, while 3D modeling proceeds by composing geometric operations in sequence, uh, and parametric modeling operates uh, by, or proceeds by assembling elaborate chains of logic in sequence, machine learning models operate entirely differently. Um, they, they operate by matching patterns drawn from prior data. And as such, they imply a completely different mode of uh, authorship uh, in, for the designers that use them. Um, so just as we expect an author to reason differently when wielding a tool of induction versus a tool of deduction, so for example, a charcoal pencil as opposed to a calculator, we would similarly expect entirely new cultures of design to, to emerge in response to this sort of paradigm shift in the nature of software. And our project anticipates uh, exactly this. So the tool described here in this project uh, is intended to be thoroughly inductive. We intend to support sketching. Uh, and the inductive nature of the tool is clear uh, insofar as we first invite a designer, a designer who is using the tool, uh, to define what we term an indexical relationship between a hand-drawn mark, something that a mark that they make with their hand, and the qualities of the image that that mark is mapped to. And only after that indexical relationship is established do we ask the user to kind of find the quote unquote reason uh, for the images in the composition of a drawing. Uh, and this is largely how sketching operates. It's completely different than making a 3D model. Um, this is how uh, the artist Scott Eaton works, as we see here, which is one of the primary inspirations uh, for this work. Um, so in this way, the project seeks to anticipate new cultures of drawing practice uh, that will relies in relationship to this tool. Uh, and of course, other tools that also take a similar approach. And from this, we hope to uncover new modalities of authorship latent in, still, in, in this still emerging paradigm of computer assisted design. Um, a couple of terms to help guide us. In context of this tool, uh, in the parlance estab established by the project, we understand uh, a trained neural network that is ready for sketching. Uh, we term that a brush, right? So that's a neural network that's like trained up and situated and like ready for us to kind of uh, draw with, draw together with. Um, similarly, we term the activation of a brush in the service of performing an image translation, uh, either a transaction or an inference. And this is language uh, that's um, drawn from, um, drawn from computer science. Um, a brief discussion over kind of overview of the central mechanisms at work uh, in this brush. So in, embedded in the brush itself is the central mechanism of augmented drawing activity. Um, this is envisioned as a conversation and you see an animation here of me using the brush. Um, it's envisioned as a conversation uh, and it's expressed as a kind of graphic call and response. So first a human author composes a drawing, uh, makes a mark, 
that may or may not adhere to some anticipated graphic convention. Uh, next, this call image is passed to a neural net, which is trained to offer a response image, uh, which is passed back to the sketching environment to be, to be displayed to the author. Um, if the results are not satisfactory, then the process can be repeated by modifying the original drawing, uh, changes can be made, or the author could choose to move on to a new portion of the sketch. So due to certain ter uh, technical limitations of the current system, we're constrained to uh, transaction, uh, transacting only on images uh, that are smaller than the typical size of most architectural sketches. Um, and so for this reason, the transaction typically represents only a portion or a segment of a larger drawing. So what you see here are lots of transactions that kind of aggregate together to form a larger sort of sketch. So I'm pressing that button many, many times. Um, um, okay, so that's the basic sort of mechanism uh, of the project. Uh, a quick thank you to the students at UC Berkeley. Uh, so the research was closely related to an upper division undergraduate research studio uh, offered in the spring of 2020. Uh, here's my list of students. They're an extraordinarily uh, inspiring and resilient bunch. Um, so now I'd like to talk about um, uh, in a very quick overview, the specific tools, methods, and workflows that constitute the sketch depicts augmented drawing tool. Um, and since most of the technical details are already covered in the paper, uh, I'm just going to speak solely to the experience of the user. So I'm imagining that uh, you're a person who would like to make their own augmented drawing partner. Um, and if that's so, then these four steps are required. Uh, so first we establish a kind of training data set. And it's important to note that the user is responsible for that. Uh, I don't provide brushes, you know, kind of inbuilt the way Photoshop does. It's up to the user to define these things for the sel themselves. That's a part of the authorial act is to define the training set for the brush. Uh, so for us, data sets are derived from a combination of 3D scanning to get a digital model and texture modeling. Uh, and so there are some scripts associated with that. Uh, second is the training and validation of a neural network. Uh, this is the kind of very techy stuff that we want to mainly hide from novice users. It's done through a GPU cloud, uh, cloud computing environment, and it's supported again by a collection of sort of user-friendly scripts. Uh, third is the deploying of this trained model to allow com communication with whatever graphic sketching environment uh, is being used, and for us that's Photoshop. And then fourth is the configuration and the customization of the sketching environment to best facilitate a conversation with an AI partner. Um, so I'll take these kind of very quickly, one at a time. Um, the most critical step, really, uh, in uh, crafting a sketch to fix brush is the conceptualization and the establishment of a data, a data set on which to train, uh, something that might be kind of overlooked. So here, these are kind of toy examples that we developed um, you know, as samples. Uh, so here, the central operation of a brush is established through the, through the 3D modeling and texture, texture modeling of a, of, a, of a digital model. Um, so uh, embedded in this 3D model is already the kind of mapping between a, a graphic call by a human author and the desired image, quote, response of the neural network. Uh, so here we can see that at work. Um, this is our sample bowling pin. On the left are samples of our training set. So we render the 3D digital model with colors and textures, and we map that onto another kind of rendering, which is meant to kind of simulate a human sketch. It's a line uh, that describes edges and a kind of gray fill. And that's enough for the, um, for the pix to pix model to pick up on the right kind of relationship. On the right here, you see me sketching uh, with a brush that was trained in this way. So the reason for using um, a 3D model data set is because we need a, a, a data set that is sufficiently large to train upon, uh, which is quite big. And so by taking many views of the 3D model, we can achieve that. Uh, so step two is the training and validating of a neural network. Um, and again, we do this uh, um, on a kind of cloud computing environment. And this is because most novice designers lack desi direct access to the computing resources and the expertise necessary to complete this training in a reasonable amount of time. Uh, so we provided resources for this. And so this, these are novice undergraduate students of, of design that are able to kind of click through something like a Google, a Google Colab notebook uh, well enough to train their own brushes uh, sort of by themselves. Uh, third, there's the deploying of this model once trained to, um, to an environment in which it can communicate with a kind of graphic sketching um, environment. Uh, so something that kind of facilitates the connection between these two things. Um, and while in the recent past, such a step would present considerable difficulty and quite a bit of like, you know, software development to achieve, 
um, and would be impossible for a novice user. Uh, recently, there's been introduced um, a kind of uh, pieces of software or really services that provide model hosting and distribution. Uh, and that has significantly eased this burden and lowered barriers of entry in important ways. So given a, a service such as this, we're using uh, Runway ML. Uh, this is a rev relatively trivial process from the, the user's perspective. Uh, finally, there's the interactive sketching component of the work. Um, where uh, the model is deployed to the hosting and distribution service um, and we need to define the mechanisms of interacting with this model which might now be regarded as a kind of, a kind of functional drawing assistant at this point. Um, so the details of this collaborative drawing activity are largely guided by the features of the interface developed for the given graphic sketching environment. And a large amount of development time spent, was spent sort of noodling around uh, trying to get Adobe Photoshop to interact well with this hosted model uh, to get the kind of human computer interface of that right. Um, I would just note here that uh, how to best structure a successful interaction with an AI assistant, that's actually a topic of like current research in HCI circles. Um, and it's important to, to, to our fields as well. So from this perspective, uh, we take the position of strongly valuing the iterative development of small scale graphics in the service of larger composition uh, comp compositions. This is because in our view, the ease of iteration is essential to facilitating the feeling of a conversation uh, with an AI partner. I see that I have about um, a minute left. So I'm going to try a very, very quick live demonstration if I can. So here's Runway that's currently running on my uh, computer. This is where a model is hosted. Right now I have a model uh, being served up uh, that was trained on images and forms of plaster blobs. Uh, and over here I have uh, Photoshop. Uh, I have to minimize that. Um, and in the Photoshop environment, I'm sketching with my mouse. So please forgive my Brad drawings. I can draw here on a layer and fill that in with this predefined kind of gray color to give the computer a hint as to what I want. And then I push this button in the upper right called Abracadabra. And if I glance over at Runway, you'll see that it should be receiving. It is not <laughs> receiving. Ah, it's not running. I forgot to start it. I'm starting it now. So it will receive the, uh, the, uh, the message from Photoshop. Let's try that again. And then send back a reply. Abracadabra once more. Go talk to Runway. It happened. Voila! Uh, sketching, interactive sketching uh, with Photoshop and machine learning models. Let's just change it and push Abracadabra again and watch it from this side. So there, it's tried to put the colors and textures of a kind of plaster model uh, in my Photoshop document. Fantastic. Um, so very quickly to wrap up, um, I'll just recap that I've presented the mechanisms of a tool that supports machine augmented architectural sketching. This is an activity that we see as a special case of inductive uh, design thinking. Um, two quick observations. Once is a reminder of the central role of iteration in design. I don't think I have to highlight that again. But second is an indication of the sorts of challenges that lie ahead in the shift from geometric and log logical modeling activities uh, to those that are required by machine learning. Uh, or CAD software based on machine learning. We see such a challenge in the role that the 3D models that were produced uh, here in the service of training. Um, and we're looking at student um, authored sketches here. Um, so here there's a shift in the representational role that these models play uh, from a kind of directly representational role where the model stands in for a building that we envision to a kind of loosely indexical role where the model defines the relationships and patterns to be learned by a neural network, which prefers information such as colors and patterns over forms and organizations. Uh, we expect, so this is one example of a kind of challenge, but we expect to find many, many more such differences between traditional forms of computer-aided design and the emerging forms that are based on machine learning. Um, and that wraps it up. Thank you very much.